Our rivers and our streams are too important to give away to private corporations. We have the cheapest electricity in the world because of public energy. But that soon is going to be lost as we turn to more private sources of electricity. It's the biggest heist of public resources in Canadian history and an enormous threat to the future of British Columbia's environment, economy and society. But up until now, the public has been kept in the dark. Over the past several years, the provincial government has been quietly giving away potentially permanent rights to hundreds of BC's rivers to some of the world's biggest corporations. At the same time, it has put BC's envied public utility in grave danger by forcing it to buy all its new power from these private river operations at up to 20 times the price it makes its own power for. The BC Energy Plan takes every single watershed in British Columbia that can make power and puts it in a private hand. And the population is unaware of that. I think the word is malfeasance. It is essentially privatization by stealth uh, by the government. But the media and citizens are taking notice now, fortunately in time to stop the vast majority of these disastrous projects and dramatic changes to BC's energy system. But the time to act is now given the inevitable consequences if this program goes forward. Much higher power costs to consumers, the depletion of an invaluable public asset, and devastation to BC's natural environment. The big losers here are the public in British Columbia because they're the ones that are going to pay the long-term costs, both in economic, environmental, and social costs. As for the value of our hydro resources, they'll effectively be lost. And when they say that these small projects are green or balanced in nature, they're just simply lying. I, I had read all the material and I understood Run of the River very well. But when I actually got a chance to go out and view the Ashley project uh, uh, myself, I was stunned. When you uh, have that impact and you magnify it and you multiply it 500 times, you have a really serious problem. Fears began to rise over construction giant Leadcore's private power project on the Ashloo River, a world-renowned kayaking and fishing destination. This is Brian Smith, Squamish filmmaker and kayaking enthusiast. Smith recently completed a documentary on the devastating impacts by Leadcore's project on his beloved Ashloo and the disturbingly undemocratic process that led to its quote-unquote approval. After hearing from a long list of concerned residents and experts through its public consultation process, the Squamish and Lillooet Regional District voted 8-1 to one against zoning approval for the project. And that's where the democracy ended. The local government held several public hearings. They listened to the people. They said no to the project. And then the government sort of backhandedly approved the project through Bill 30. Bill 30, also known as the Ashloo Bill, stripped local municipalities of their zoning authority over private river power projects, leaving BC's communities without a voice in this process. They essentially just changed the, the rules and took away their authority to uh, protect their community's interests. With the local government out of the way, in late 2006, Leadcore rolled in to the public's dismay installing security to control access, clear-cutting trees, and boring a massive hole through the side of Ashloo Mountain to divert 92% of the river's flow. We drive up to the Ashloo and there's a major road going through and, and there's logging everywhere and there's transmission lines everywhere. And they said, where's your ID? And, and we're saying, well, aren't we on a public road? We've told you not to wander around in our construction areas. And we moved out. But, but you we've had to, to inform you repeatedly. That's so why is this where we're getting into an issue where it's is this a public road? Just clear out of the way yes. and let us go. It's a public, public road. road. I'd like you to move your truck and allow us to go up the road. Otherwise, I'd like to know who you are. I'll take it back to the are minister. I was taken aback. Uh, it was much bigger uh, than I had ever expected it to be. The construction, the development, the uh, degradation of the environment around uh, the river, all of those things, the, the, the majesty of the river itself, watching it run, it's a phenomenal river, the Ashloo.
It is out of control, and we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg right now. More than 30 similar projects are already underway or nearing completion, with hundreds more waiting in the wings. We took a trip to this dock in North Vancouver to get a look at the piles of water pipe arriving here from around the world. Much of this pipe will likely end up in BC's rivers for private power projects. This staggering volume moves through here on a regular basis, giving a sense of the scale of projects like the 120 megawatt behemoth at East Toba, or the eight planned projects totaling 180 megawatts in the single watershed of the Upper Pitt River, the latest flashpoint for the growing coalition to stop private power in BC. The Upper Pitt River is a really special place. It has an amazing amount of wildlife. You have grizzly bears, you have wolves, you have Roosevelt elk. But what it's, what it's really known for is its um, wild salmon population. There you have eight uh, potential turbines uh, to be put in place. It's a massive project. You'll be running transmission lines through the middle of a provincial park. In addition to its severe environmental consequences, the BC Energy Plan poses a grave economic threat to the province, with business fundamentals that would make sense only to those private companies on the other end of these lucrative, secure deals. One of the largest and greenest public hydro utilities in the world today, BC Hydro has long been a model for affordable, sustainable electricity. BC Hydro got its start in the 1950s and 60s when Premier W.A.C. Bennett bought out several private power companies, including BC Electric Company, and committed significant public funds to build one of the world's finest, most valuable public utilities. By selecting a few strategic locations on the Peace and Columbia rivers to dam, BC is now able to create the cheapest power in the world at a raw cost of about $5 a megawatt hour, a standard unit of measurement for electricity. BC Hydro sells power to large industry at a paltry $35 a megawatt hour, providing a competitive advantage to BC businesses and major economic stimulus and job creation throughout the province. Residential consumers pay about $65 a megawatt hour, among the cheapest rates in Canada, and five times less than what consumers in California pay. The balance pays for the operation of the system and still allows for a healthy profit that flows back into the province for healthcare, education, and other vital public services. So we're paying essentially for the operation and maintenance of the system. The fuel doesn't cost us a dime. It's an absolutely perfect system. But the BC Energy Plan changed all that. Made official by the provincial government in 2003, this new policy forbade BC Hydro from creating any new power of its own, forcing it instead to buy power from private river operations at much higher rates. I call it a buy high, sell low strategy. Under this new system, BC Hydro has already signed $30 billion worth of purchase agreements at up to $87 a megawatt hour, plus the hefty price tag on new transmission systems for private power, which brings the real cost to BC Hydro to over $100 a megawatt hour as compared with the approximately $5 a megawatt hour it makes its own power for now. In fact, the government recently announced $5.1 billion in public spending to upgrade BC's transmission grid. Just last year, the government extended the special $35 rate to industry indefinitely, ensuring its support for the BC Energy Plan. And BC Hydro sells electricity to its neighbours on what is called the spot market, which is currently at about $50 a megawatt hour. As illogical as this may seem to the consumer, BC Hydro is actually committed to a perpetual loss in both industrial and export sales since the cost of new private power is a lot higher than the sale prices it's locked into in these markets, which leaves the public with the enormous financial burden of supporting the system through much higher consumer rates. Rates are going to go up because costs are going to go up. As uh, BC Hydro buys more and more of these high cost resources, more than necessary, loses money on the buying of resources that sold at a loss in export markets. And left unchecked, this never-ending debt cycle will bankrupt BC's public utility in the future, 